Welcome back to the channel. In this video I'm going to cover off one of the remaining factors of using the MTR105 in place of the Keysight U1461A when I do motor, uh, motor starter maintenance. Now the vast majority of the panels that I have will have some form of a transducer inside them. Generally speaking they are current transducers and this is one of the transducers here. This is what they look like. It will take a signal from current transformer and put it out in a smaller milliamp signal that the control system will understand. In this case for this one it's 4 to 20 milliamps and that's uh, the vast majority of the ones that I deal with. So for those who have not come across it I'll stick a circuit diagram up that shows that a little bit better. So the current transducer circuit is within the orange box on the drawing. You'll see on the far left hand side there is a single current transformer called CT5 that has a 2000 to 1 amp ratio. That feeds through, on this particular circuit, it does feed through a test block, but we can ignore that really. It feeds via the test block straight into the current transducer, such as this one here. That would be the 0 to 1 amps that would come in on terminals 1 and 2 here. And then on the output would go 4 to 20 milliamp out to the control system. And then in the control system for the settings, you would reset that ratio back to the current transformer ratio. So the display on the control system would go between 0 and 2000 amps, with the 0 being 4 milliamps and 2000 amps being 20 milliamps. The reason why we use a 4 to 20 is for error checking, so that if you get less than 4 milliamps out, the control system knows that's less than 0, so it knows that that's actually a fault and it's not just something that's just not switched on, whereas if you had zero milliamps down there, is equal to zero amps, it would never know whether there's a fault or not until you ran the system. So one aspect of the maintenance on panels would be to test the output of these current transducers. Um, actually out in the field we would use a current injections test set to provide 0 to 1 amps, and then we just use an instrument, a multimeter, to measure the 4 to 20 milliamps and record it over the range of the input now this Keysight U1461A does have a lovely feature. Obviously first of all it does have the milliamp setting anyway to read current directly from the input of these jacks whereas in the MTR105 I can only have that measuring a voltage. Um, but this instrument here also has, you have to set it up in the menus but it has a special 4 to 20 milliamp loop checking function which I've got on here now. If I bring him in a bit closer, you see at this moment in time it's displaying 0 milliamps input at the bottom and at the top I've got minus 25%. Uh, that's because it's looking for the 4 to 20 milliamp and it obviously isn't finding it until I connect it up. Now the MTR105 won't have that at all, I will not be able to emulate that. I will nearly have to go to DC voltage level and see how well I can take a reading in comparison to this instrument here. To help me do that with this I've made this little test lead up. Um, this is a little Pomona stackable jack here, it's a standard 19mm slash 3 quarter inch space in between the two pins that will plug straight into the top of the MTR105. Inside it, whether I can show it or well off. I've placed a little precision resistor across those two jacks and that's a 100 ohm high tolerance resistor with a very low thermal coefficient as well to give it better stability. Just a bit of standard two core flex and at this end I've used a couple of uh, red crimps there. Um, for this kind of test setup I like to use these pen crimps. You can put ferrules on the end of the lead, standard ferrules, but I find they're quite weak. And I find these better to use than the ferrules for situations where you're constantly taking them in and out of terminals. They're, they are a little bit bulky and you do have to sort of slide them in on their side rather than uh, flat like that. They will just about go in on some smaller terminals, it won't. So you kind of have to put them in that way and they're fine, but I find them much more robust than a ferrule, so I tend to stick to those for this kind of setup. 
Okay, so what I'm going to do is set up a power supply. Instead of to actually test it with this item, I would need an injection test set, uh, a mains power supply, and then obviously one of the meters. I'm going to cheat a little bit and set up uh, a source measurement unit, and that will provide me with a much more accurate current. Okay, so we've set up our source measurement unit. And I'll set it to supply 4 milliamps. I've got my key site set up here. I'm just going to change the range on that so that it stays on milliamps. That just makes it a little bit quicker test, so it's changing the ranges as we go on. And we'll put 4 milliamp in. And then hopefully you can see there we've got 4 milliamp down at the bottom, 4.00. And we've got 0.0%. So we'll now take it up to 8 milliamps. And 8.00, 25%, again, 800 milliamps on the key site here. Also, note uh, whilst we're doing this test, is the burden here 22.4 millivolts. It's a very, very low burden because I'm using a current range on an instrument. Uh, let's go. Another, another 4 milliamps, 12.001 on 12 there, and dead on 50%, 16 milliamps, 75%, 16.00, and finally 20 milliamps full range is 20.00 dead on there, 55.933. 3, 4 millivolts there, so very low burden, and you see on the key site here superb accuracy 20.00 milliamps and smack on 100%. So that's one reason why I like the key site so much. You see here superb accuracy when doing this particular test, and I've got the installation test function that'll work on the vast majority of motors without any issue. And all the general the rest of the DMM functions are a 200 milliamp resistance test as well. So, uh, very, very good instruments for general purpose motor maintenance. Okay, so we'll just put them back down to 4 milliamps, turn them off, take them out of the way, and we'll bring the mega into play. So, that's the Pomona jack there plugged into the top. And so, just use a couple of adapters to get into this. Okay, so we're set to DC volts. I've got no range control on this instrument, it's uh, auto ranging. And we will set the instrument to 4 milliamps. And there we see. 400 millivolts, so obviously with a 100 ohm resistor, that's going to give me my 4 milliamps of current flow. So I just divide it by 100 to get the current. Um, but you see the burden is now 0.4 volts, so quite a bit higher burden when I'm using this test methodology. Um, we all go up to 8 milliamps. So we're on 8 milliamps. Uh, 7.99. Yeah, a little bit of flickering. I'm not sure why this instrument's flickering, really, it shouldn't be. Okay, try 12 milliamps. 12 milliamps, smack on 1.20 volts, which will give me my 12.0 milliamps. 16, that's down to 1.60, yeah, pretty much smack on as well, the final full scale, 20 milliamps, 19.99 milliamps on there, which is, as far as this is concerned, is 2 volts, which would be your 20 milliamps, again dividing by 100. Uh, but you see the burden is actually 2.005 volts. So a little bit more burden would be put onto the actual transducer output. Usually when testing it's straight on its own, that won't be an issue. However, if you tested this by putting this in series with the control system, 
um, you would need to know how much burden the control system, or in other words, how much voltage the transducer would need to drive in order to get the 20 milliamps through this instrument and the control system as well, because these transducers have a, a limit to them. Usually it's somewhere around about 500 to 750 ohms in my experience. So by selecting the 100 ohms, I hope to stay underneath that burden because the burden would be increased with the 100 ohms from this plus the input impedance of the control system plus any cabling, the resistance of any cabling in between the two which is what you see a little bit on here. Obviously I've got a little bit of resistance in this cable so instead of this being exactly on 2.00 volts which would be representative of that 100 ohm resistor there. I've also got a little bit of cable resistance here including it which is giving me my slightly larger voltage. Okay, what I'll do is I'll stick a table up with the results comparing it to the key site. Obviously I do lose a decimal point when I'm doing it with this in comparison to the key site instrument. There's a bit more accuracy on there. But these transducers will be 0.5% accuracy on them anyway, so they're not the most accurate of devices. So I kind of feel that testing it in this way would be fairly realistic. Okay, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching, hope you found it useful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and a like, and I will see you again in the next video.